Of course, nobody can hear me. Oh, okay. So I didn't have my microphone on and I'm glad I checked. I'm glad I checked. So the mic was off, so I'm going to have to start over. I hate it when that happens. All right, so let's start over. Who was James Augustine Healy? James Augustine Healy, born April of 1830, died August of 1900, was an American Roman Catholic priest and the second bishop of Portland, Maine. He was the first black Catholic priest, though it was not widely known, and was the first black American bishop as well. We're going to start with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, let's do a quick bio first. James Augustine Haley was born in Georgia to a mixed-race slave mother and Irish immigrant father. He identified and was accepted as white Irish American, as he was half Irish and majority European. When he was ordained in 1854, knowledge of his mixed-race ancestry was largely restricted to his mentors in the church. Augustus Tolton, who I have a biography about, you should go to sdcason.com and check it out um, because it is a very interesting story. Augustus Tolton, who was a former slave, was publicly known to be black when ordained in 1886, and it is for that reason that he is credited as the first black Catholic priest rather than Healy. Healy was one of nine mixed race siblings of the Catholic Healy family of Georgia who survived to adulthood and achieved many firsts in United States history. His brother Patrick and Alexander became Catholic priests as well. James is credited with greatly expanding the Catholic Church in Maine at a time of increased Irish immigration, and he also served Abenaki people who were a Native American tribe and many parishioners of French-Canadian descent who were traditionally Catholic. He spoke both English and French. All right, so let's get into the full biography. Let's talk about his family and education. James Healy was the eldest of 10 siblings born near Macon, Georgia in 1893 to Michael Morris Healy, an Irish immigrant planter, and his common-law wife, Eliza Smith, sometime recorded as Clark, a mixed-race enslaved black American. Born in 1795, the senior Healy immigrated from County Roscommon in Ireland in 1818. He eventually acquired 1,500 about 1,500 acres of land in Jones County, Georgia, across the Akmulgee River from the market town of Macon, Georgia. He became among the more prominent and successful planters of the area and eventually owned 49 to 60 slaves for his cotton plantation, which was labor intensive. Among these was a young slave woman named Mary Eliza Smith, whom he took as his wife in 1829. Various accounts have described Mary Eliza as slave or former slave and as mulatto or black. The latter term includes people of mixed ancestry. The common law marriage of Michael and Mary Healy was not unusual among immigrants, but state law prohibited interracial marriage. Most of their 10 children, all but one of whom survived to adulthood, achieved noteworthy success as adults. Helped by Healy's financial success and the educations he gained from them, in the north. Beginning in 1837, like many other wealthy planters with mixed race children, Michael Healy started sending his sons to school in the north. James, Hugh, and Patrick went to Quaker schools in Flushing, New York, and Burlington, New Jersey. Later, they each attended, attended the newly opened College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts. James graduated as valedictorian of the college's first graduating class in 1849. Younger brother Sherwood began at Holy Cross in 1844 and Michael in 1849 in its grammar school. So let's talk about his career. Following graduation, I need to make that big. There we go. Following graduation, James wished to enter the priesthood. He could not study at the Jesuit novitiate in Maryland as it was a slave state. With the help of John Bernard Fitzpatrick, James entered a Sulpician seminary, and Sulpician is a society of apostolic life um, named after the Church of St. Sulpice in Paris. So there are monks who practice a certain style of prayer. And he went to Montreal to learn with the Sulpicians. In 1852, he transferred to study at St. Sulpice Seminary in Paris, working toward a doctorate and a career as a seminary professor. 
after a change of heart, he decided to become a pastor. And a pastor is a leader of a, Catholic, a specific Catholic church. On June 10th of 1854, he was ordained at the Nor no sorry, Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris as a priest to serve in Boston, Massachusetts. He was the first black American to be ordained a Roman Catholic priest. At the time, he was identified as and was accepted as white Irish Catholic. During the 19th century, numerous Americans studied for the priesthood in Paris. And one of the things I wanted to talk about real quick was passing or what was commonly referred to as passing. And that is when a black person who is mixed is just light enough to be able to pass as another race, usually white. And in this case, um, James Healy passed as white because he was light enough. And this was an acceptable practice for many years, but it was kind of, it was frowned upon with some people in the black community because some people are too dark. They, there is no way they could pass. So of course, people who were darker have, and were mixed, have no choice. They have no option but to be seen as black. So I don't want to diminish what James Healy did, but at the same time, we do have to recognize that he he passed because that was something that he could do to, to get ahead. And of course, he still did great things in the world, but we do need to kind of touch upon that because this is a time in the world where racism and segregation and all these things were rampant. And one of the things I like to point out with these Black History videos is the fact that we aren't dealing with these things anymore. There are still issues. Nobody is going to deny that. However, the major issues are gone. Uh, we do not have people having to pass as another race in order to get a job or a promotion or what have you. You even have some places such as where I live in Virginia where it's all black people in charge. You got black people as the governor. You got um, black people in the city council, black people on the school board. It's all black people in charge. And there's many places in the U.S. that are that way. And they're not just in charge because there's only black people in that place. There's, there's all kinds of people, all types of races, particular cities, but black people are in charge because, you know, they did their best and they got in those positions. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that, but we don't have to deal with passing anymore. That's the point I wanted to make. And I like to, if you don't go back to history, you don't know how far people have come. So how far black people have come, it is very enlightening and encouraging to me to see that many issues that black people had to deal with in the past are just totally gone. And I thank God. I thank God for that. And hopefully one day we can get iron over some of those other issues that we still have. But um, thank God that people don't have to worry about passing anymore. Okay, moving on. When Healy returned to the United States, he became an assistant pastor in Boston. He served the archbishop who helped establish his standing in the church. In 1866, Healy became the pastor of St. James Church, the largest Catholic congregation in Boston. In 1874, when the Boston legislature was considering taxation of churches, Healy defended Catholic institutions as vital organizations that helped the state both socially and financially. He also condemned certain laws that were generally enforced only on Catholic institutions. He founded several Catholic charitable institutions to care for the many poor Irish immigrants who had arrived during the Great Famine years. And the Great Famine, also known as the Great Hunger or the Great Starvation, it's also called the Irish Potato Famine, um, was a period of mass starvation and disease in Ireland from 1845 to 1849. So a lot of Catholics immigrated to the United States at that time, uh, a lot of uh, Irish Catholics. His success in the public sphere led to his appointment by Pope Pius IX to the position of second bishop of Portland, Maine. Healy was consecrated as Bishop of Portland on June 2nd of 1875, becoming the first black American to be consecrated a Catholic bishop. For 25 years, he governed his large diocese, supervising also the founding of the Diocese of Manchester, New Hampshire, when it was split from Portland in 1885. During his time in Maine, which was a period of extensive immigration from Catholic countries, Healy oversaw the establishment of 60 new churches, 68 missions, 18 convents, and 18 schools. That is absolutely amazing. 
He was the only member of the American Catholic hierarchy to excommunicate men who joined the Knights of Labor, uh, which was a national union, which reached its peak in power in 1886. Let's talk about the Knights of Labor a little bit. There were an American Labor Federation active in the late 19th century, especially in the 1880s. It operated in the United States as well as in Canada and had chapters also in Great Britain. But why did he excommunicate them? Let's find out. What did they believe? They promoted social and cultural uplift of the working man and demanded the eight hour day. In some cases, they acted as a labor union negotiating with employers, but was never well organized or funded. Huh. Why? Why were they excommunicated? Let's see. Immigration restriction. Hmm. Supported the Chinese visa to douche. Huh. I'm not sure why he excommunicated people from this place. Interesting. Okay. I'll have to learn about that some other time. Okay. Let's talk about the legacy of James Augustine Healy. Healy's papers are held by the College of the Holy Cross, Worcester, the archives of the Archdiocese of Boston, and the archives of the Diocese of Portland, Maine. So he wrote a lot of papers, and a lot of colleges and other places still have those. Um, the Archdiocese of Boston Office for Black Catholics has designated the Bishop James Augustine Healy Award to honor dedicated black parishioners. That's pretty cool. In 1975, Archbishop Thomas A. Donnellan of Atlanta and Bishop of Bishop Raymond Lessard of Savannah donated a bronze plaque to be dedicated in Jones County, Georgia, commemorating the Georgia-born Healy. The Healy Asylum in Lewiston, Maine was named in his honor. Now let's talk about his siblings a little bit. All four of the older Healy brothers, James, Hugh, Patrick, and Sherwood, graduated from Holy Cross College. Hugh decided to go into business in New York. He died at age 21 from an infection contracted in a boating accident. That, that is very sad. Patrick and Sherwood each entered the priesthood. So of his four brothers, uh, two of them entered the priesthood and one of them went into business and died. Patrick Fan Francis Healy became a Jesuit and Jesuits is a religious order of the Catholic Church headquartered in Rome. It was founded by Ignatius of Loyola and six companions. Uh, the Jesuits have been around for a long time. They mostly teach um, and have colleges and things like that. But in the beginning, their goal was to evangelize places where people hadn't converted like India and Japan. And there's actually a movie about it, which I heard wasn't that good um, as far as like Catholic teaching. The movie is called Silence. And it's about how the Jesuits went to Japan and had to deal with a lot of persecution. Um, I haven't seen it. I can't vouch for it, but I'm just letting you know it's out there. Uh, but there's lots of good books about the Jesuits. Uh, check them out. He earned a PhD in Paris and is now considered the first black American to have gained a PhD. That's interesting. Or is it that PhD? Yeah, that particular PhD. Okay, he was named a dean at Georgetown University in 18. Six. At the age of 39 in 1874, he assumed the presidency of what was then the largest, largest Catholic college in the United States. So James' brother, Patrick, was a professor and then became the president of Georgetown University. Alexander Sherwood Healy was also ordained as a priest and earned his doctorate degree at the Sulpician Academy in Paris, the same uh, university that James went to. He became an expert in canon law and Gregorian chant. Well, isn't that interesting? So at my church, they sing Gregorian chant. And um, that's really interesting that he would pick to become an expert in Gregorian chant. That's pretty cool. Okay, after working with his brother James in Boston for a time, Sherwood was appointed director of the Catholic Seminary in Troy, New York. And a seminary is just a place where they train priests and later as rector of the cathedral in Boston. And a rector is a person who's in charge of a place, in charge of like a church, but not like, they're not the pastor, but they're in charge of it. So interesting. His career was cut short by his death at age 39. So that's so sad. So two brothers died young. Um, Hugh died at 21 and Alexander died at 39. Very sad. Younger brother, Michael Augustine Healy, preferred a more adventuresome life. He left school at the age of 16 to go to sea. In England, he signed aboard the East Indian clipper Jumna as a cabin boy in 1854. He quickly became an expert seaman, 
rising to an officer. In 1864, Michael Healy returned to his family in Boston. Wow, that's, that is also very interesting. People don't just go off and become seamen anymore, seamen or sea women. Uh, so yeah, he applied for a commission in the Revenue Cutter Service, predecessor to the Coast Guard, and was accepted as a third lieutenant, his commission being signed by President Lincoln. <laughs> wow, so this, is, this family is extremely interesting. So uh, they have one brother who became the first black bishop, another brother who was one of the first black people to get a PhD in Paris, and who became a president of Georgetown University, another brother who became an expert in canon law and Gregorian chant, and another brother who became a third lieutenant in the Coast Guard. And he was signed as a, a lieutenant by Abraham Lincoln. Very interesting. In 1880, Healy was assigned command of a U.S. government ship. Since the late 20th century, he has become known as the first black American American to gain such command. So this family is pretty amazing, a uh, pretty amazing group of individuals here who have a lot of firsts under their belts. Maybe this family just kind of wiped the board with firsts. They just like, they were going for the Guinness Book of World Records of firsts for black people. So that is pretty cool. And I've never heard of them before. So in this one biography, you actually get information about, you know, lots of other people as well. Maybe I'll do these other brothers too, eventually. Okay, so during the last two decades of the 19th century, Captain Healy was essentially the federal government's law enforcement present in the vast Alaska Territory, which was, um, this was before Alaska became a state. Commissioned in 1999, the U.S. Coast Guard research icebreaker USCGC Healy is named in his honor. The three Healy daughters became nuns. Wow, this is a really holy family. Uh, Martha the first left the order after several years and moved to Boston. An Irish immigrant, and they had one son. Josephine Healy rejoined the religious hospitallers of St. Joseph. And hospital hospitallers are a type of nuns who specifically work in hospitals. Uh, so she went to Canada for that. Eliza Healy joined the congregation of Notre Dame in Montreal. So she went to Canada as well. After teaching for years at Catholic schools in Quebec and Ontario in 1903, she was appointed as Mother Superior at a Catholic convent and school. And a Mother Superior is just a nun that's in charge of a whole place. Um, so, wow, that's very interesting. So she was put in charge at St. Albans, Vermont. Since the late 20th century, she has been known as the first black American to gain the position as abbess, also known as Mother Superior. Another first. Eugene Healy, the youngest son, was reported by Albert S. Foley, biographer of James A. Healy, to have died soon after birth. So that is another sad early death. But you know, back in the day, in the 19th century, there were a lot of children who died uh, right after childbirth or during childbirth and mothers who died as well. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ that the amount of infant deaths and the amount of deaths of pregnant women giving birth has gone way, 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 way down all over the whole world. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, people dying young by disease has also gone down a massive amount. Now, there are still people who die young because of accidents and things like that, and may God rest their souls, but uh, people just dying young be just because of diseases hanging around, it is very rare, and at the time of this recording, and thank the Lord. So that's it. So a quick recap about James Augustine Healy. Who was he? He was, here's a picture of him. He was a mixed race black American. He was black and Irish, I believe about half and half. And he was able to pass as Irish. He went to uh, Europe to study. He went to Paris. He became ordained as a priest. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And then he was or, uh, ordained as a bishop. And he was one of the first black bishops, or should we say mixed race uh, bishops in America. And his family members also did a lot of first. So what can we learn about James Augustine Healy. What can we learn from him? And I just made a little picture here. Uh, let me take this off. 
And I made a little picture here. Oh, of course my camera froze. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me let me stop the camera. There we go. But the microphone's still going. So right here, we have the moral virtues. And we want to talk about what, what James Augustine Healy did and how that can help us to live a better life. So he... So what did he use? Was it justice, temperance, fortitude, prudence? So I would say <clears throat> that he used fortitude. And you can see here fortitude is, is being able to endure during difficulties. And he, of course, he didn't have the easiest life. He had to kind of, I don't want to say pretend, but yeah, he had to pretend that he was white so that he could do the things that he wanted to do. And I'm sure that that just didn't sit well with him his whole life. He's like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm really wide, so it's not a big deal. I don't think so. He probably had feelings about it, and but he had to go on in order to try to do what he wanted to do. He, he had to do that. And um, for him, thankfully, he could pass, but many other people who were darker could not. So he had to have the fortitude to have patience and to persevere and he did that but not only that but on this other side and i need to redo this because you like cannot see half of it because this white box is covering it let me see do 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 do, do. yeah it's like covering it up so you can't see it it's okay so on this other side we have uh justice and justice is respecting the rights of others and i always come back to this over and over and over again it is so important to have charity towards our fellow man other people are not people are not slaves god never meant it for it for people to be slaves of other people that is just something human beings came up with and it is a horrible thing it's not good so we should never do it. And it still goes on to this very day at the time of this recording. People shouldn't be slaves. It's not OK. Um, and, we, and even if people aren't slaves, we should treat people the way we want to be treated. That is important part of justice. And that's called charity and also sociability. Uh, James Augustine Haley was very sociable. Clearly he was. He was able to get along with lots of different people and he did his job well, which is why he was promoted to bishop. And um, he had a lot of things in his way, for example, being mixed race, but he overcame that and he did the best he could with what he had and he didn't make an excuse, oh, well, I'm mixed, so I can't do this or that. He, um, he did everything that he could to the best of his ability. So that is fortitude which is we should have we should do our best even when things are hard and he had and we should have justice we should respect the rights of other people and we should be very social but we should be very friendly and we should be able to get along with other people as well and that is so let me put this back up and take this down so that is james augustine Healy. And that is our biography for today. So we are going to go out. Um, of course, like, share, subscribe. I always forget to say that in the beginning. <laughs> so like, share, and subscribe. And if you want these videos sent to your inbox, go ahead and click the link in the description, which has a link. Or if you're on my website, right down there, there is a subscription box. Put your email in and you will get email sent to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of all the updates, biographies, prayers, history shows, all that good stuff. So please, please, please subscribe by email. That is the best way you can support me and like and share as well. And that's it. We're going to do a sign of the cross to close it out in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless. And until next time, stay holy, my friends.